can't even hear that I powered them on because it's so loud in here. After months of planning, I moved some of my home lab servers into a data center located in downtown Minneapolis. This was something that wasn't even on my radar six months ago, but after moving some of my workloads to my Intel NUX and one timely tweet, I decided to give it a shot and see where this was going to take me. Now, even though I cosplay as a sysadmin at home, I haven't racked a server in a data center in over 10 years. I didn't know the slightest about modern data centers, how much they cost to co-locate a server, and if I needed to bring my own networking hardware. This was all new territory for me, so I decided to document it and share it with you. So after Will reached out to me, I did a little research on my own to see how much it would cost to co-locate my servers. I called a few data centers and asked them to give me a quote. One company quoted half a cabinet, so 24U, with 50 megabits per second internet speeds with boost up to a gigabit, two switch ports, 16 IPs for $900 a month, and a one-time fee of $4,500 a month. This is definitely not Techno Tim budget friendly. I checked with another company which offered smaller blocks of rack space, but for 4U of rack space with a 50 megabit internet with burst up to one gigabit, one public IP, I was still looking at about $350 per month. Now, this was more reasonable, but not something I could afford. And I figured it was worth looking into so that I could appreciate the offer from Will even more. Will runs a small company called Plover Digital, and he and his friends decided to rent out a rack and then split the cost. And the more people they added to the space, the cheaper it was for all of them. I definitely think that that's the way you should go if you decide to look into renting out rack space. Now it was time to get my servers cleaned up and ready for their new home. I already had two 1U micro servers that were in my server rack running Proxmox, and I wanted to run a cluster in the data center, so I picked up one more server of the same model from eBay and built it out exactly like the other two. A single 28-core Xeon with 256 gigs of RAM, four SSDs making two mirrored VDEVs, and a SATA DOM for the OS. Standardizing all of the components in these servers will make it easier to replace parts if I need to in the future. Now, these pizza box servers are great, but they don't have a lot of redundancy built into them, but that's why I have three in a cluster. I also documented everything about these servers, serial numbers, disk positions, and everything else that I might need to know in case I have to service these. It's not going to be as easy as just running down to my server rack in the basement anymore, and I wanted to be sure that if something failed, I could order parts before I make the trip to downtown Minneapolis. Okay, it's about uh, 846. I am getting ready to go down to the data center downtown Minneapolis, not too far from where I live, uh, so let's go. That's right, me and the servers took a little trip to downtown Minneapolis. The servers will be located in a CoLogix data center that's not too far from my house, which will play a role in the ping time that you'll see later on. I guess CoLogix has about 40 locations across North America. This one is actually located right across from the Viking stadiums, which is pretty cool to see in person. This data center also has lots of security, from fences to one of these weird gates that reminds me of going to the zoo. Oh, and this is Will. He has cool blue hair. Uh, William Okuno. I came up here to the University of Minnesota. While I was here, I didn't have room for my own data center or my own home lab at all. We just decided instead of doing a few U of co-location, let's just get a whole big rack and we moved everything on up. And so we've been operating here now since then. But yeah, they even have biometrics to get inside the data center. Now, they wouldn't let me film much inside of the data center due to privacy concerns, and I totally get it. If I were a large company, I wouldn't want the internet to know exactly where my servers were, so I had to keep all my shots pretty tight. Now, I did plan ahead and installed and configured everything at home, even down to the networking so I could spend the least amount of time in the data center. Although it is pretty cool in there. So I had three servers to rack, and I wasn't sure if I had to bring my own networking device. I've never racked anything in a shared space before, so I thought I needed to. Now, it might sound odd, but I used a UDM to network all of my servers here in the rack. My thinking was is that I needed at least nine LAN ports, along with a 10 gigabit WAN port, and then a firewall too, and I need to squeeze it all into one U. After thinking about it, I ended up deciding that a UDM was the best fit because it also gives me the unified network controller, which will make creating a VPN back home to my existing Unify equipment really easy. 
Now, Ubiquiti did send me this UDM to help out, but that was only after I decided that this was the best device for my situation. Then I had to power everything on to make sure that it was all working, and after a few minutes of testing, everything looked good. I was getting almost 10 gigabits per second down, which is more than I needed. If you've never been inside of a data center before, it sounds like this the whole time. It's really loud, it's really dry, and it's nice and cool inside too. Well, that is unless you're standing behind the rack where all of the heat dumps out. So if we take a look at the back, pretty typical stuff. You see, I got some power here. I got my three servers right there that are powered on and all the networking coming back. It's actually pretty warm in this aisle here because everyone's exhaust like kicks out heat here. Uh, so it's actually pretty toasty right here. But this is the back of the rack and uh, everything's networked in and it should be good. Now that I had everything connected and running, it was time to do a network test from home. I set up a site-to-site -site VPN and started pinging one of my servers in the data center, and that's when I saw something I was not expecting. Some of these are sub-millisecond pings. I thought for sure I might be pinging something in my own home on my own network, but I wasn't. It turns out that my ISP is also in this data center, and on top of that, this data center is only a few miles away. I mean, it kind of blows my mind that I can ping servers in a data center faster than I can ping some of my wireless clients on my own network. It's pretty incredible. The next thing on my list is to start building out my infrastructure from there. My plan is to move my public services there so that I don't have to host them out of my house anymore, which frees up some compute at home for some more Homeland projects, and this is where I need your help. I have already built a site-to-site -site VPN between my home and the data center, but lately I've been thinking about creating a mesh network with something like Tailscale. Now, I know there are upsides and downsides to both, but I would love to hear your opinion. If you had to connect your home lab at home to another remote site, would you use a hardware solution with a site-to-site -site VPN like I'm currently doing, or would you just go the software route and create a mesh network? Let me know what you do in the comments below. And I guess we're gonna have to put this on hold until then and we decide. Well, I learned a lot about data centers and a lot about co-locating, and I hope you learned something too. And remember, if you found anything in this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.